Absolutely not. Welcome to Highly Questionable. That's Pablo Torre, who's in the center square, but showed up last. I mean, at times, Dominique Foxworth is also on the outside. Let's get started today. Like, I don't know why we make this part of the show. Like, I don't think it's funny. I don't think it's cute. Like, it's not cool. You're late. It's rude. You're lucky we aren't in studio anymore. Hold on. This is cute. <laughs> Do any of you have the guts to say LeBron is done winning titles? All right, hold on. LeBron James has been eliminated earlier than at any other point in his career. He's out in the first round. He lost by 13 to the Phoenix Suns. The Phoenix Suns are a better team, but LeBron James had 29, 7, and 9. And I would not call him washed up. I would call him 36 years old. Do we have what I was most staggered by in this game? The one scene of LeBron and his beard. Because this dude... There is some gray. Yeah, keep on zooming. See that gray? <laughs> He's not even trying to hide it anymore. This is who he is now. He's a 36-year-old who has leg problems, who in the second half decided to try really, really hard, as I think people in that general age bracket are familiar with. And then he ran out of steam and had to sit down for a while. That is who LeBron James is now. He needed Anthony Davis. He did not get Anthony Davis beyond that beginning of the game. He's just a 36-year-old who is embracing being a little bit washed, but not washed to the point of non-contention. I mean, you kind of said, you started by saying he wasn't washed, and then you went on to explain what a washed person is. So he's absolutely not washed. He, there are plenty of excuses for the reason why the season went the way that it did. I'm sure Mina will touch on all of them. But I want to use my time to talk about Devin Booker. Like, why are we spending any time talking about LeBron yeah. and AD and all them getting run out? When Devin Booker went for 47, could have got over 50 in a closeout game, and has been the best and most impactful player in this entire series that has two. But we should leave the show showing him some love, not ragging on LeBron for actually showing a little bit of his age. Well, thank you for setting me up and putting me in a horrible place because I can now either say, yeah, Devin Booker's really good, or I can talk about the more interesting thing, <laughs> frankly, which is LeBron James. I mean, there has to be a middle ground between, you know, LeBron James is washed and he's never going to match Michael Jordan's accomplishments and the truth, which is LeBron James is still a superstar he can just no longer carry an entire basketball team like a mama possum the way he used to. A mama possum, by the way, who was clearly still banged up. LeBron was no longer driving the way he normally does. If anything, I think we need to eat crow, not on the fact that the Lakers, with all of their players healthy, are still potentially a championship team. I mean, when AD and LeBron were on the floor, they outscored the Suns by 14 points per 100 possessions in this series, but rather coming off of a shortened off season, we should have foreseen that this Lakers team was incredibly fragile because of LeBron's age, because of Anthony Davis's injuries, because of the rest of the roster. That to me was everyone's error in overestimating this Lakers team. There's another error that we've made though with Anthony Davis, who was, as Mina says, so important to this being a title run for the Lakers, because Watching him try to play basketball at the beginning of that game was like vicariously painful. And I think we all know the reason why he did it. He did it to avoid everybody the next day on shows like this one piling on him for not trying to play, right? Like that is why he did this. It's pretty clear to me why. And now we sort of are in this weird place of being like, I don't think he should have played, even though he entirely played because he was afraid of us saying that he should have. Well, I mean, I think that we don't have that should have played thing anymore after what happened to Kevin Durant. Like, I think we all should have learned that lesson. Anyone who comes out the day after a situation like that and like, should have played, should have played. I know some people say that those things weren't connected, but Kevin Durant obviously shouldn't have been out there that day. And I'm just happy that AD, the worst thing that happened to him yesterday was they got knocked out of the playoffs. But the most important thing from all the things that we've said so far is I think it's time to retire the overused animal of the goat as the greatest of all time. And now promote Mina Kimes' new animal of the Mama Possum. Possum. <laughs> the Mama Possum is, is so much better. I we mean, have you seen people Mama Possum? Yeah, I know they carry all their babies on their back. It's a they great got... analogy. Oh, on their back. I thought there was a pocket. No, the back is way better. No, the back's right. way it's better. On the back. They're not marsupials, I don't think. 
I actually wow. etch sketched LeBron huh? carrying all of his teammates as a mama possum a long time ago. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Of course you did. I forget that Mina is Look, not dude. cool. Like I, I spent a lot of time I don't. with Mina I remember and I that talked often. to Mina and I'm like, I like Mina, she's cool. And then she does something like, <laughs> I have a sketch of LeBron as a mama <laughs> possum. Let what, me look it up. What's, what's great, Dominic, is that think. she's currently flipping through like a photo archive of a thousand etch sketches. Oh my God. Here you go, I found it. Her viral meme library, by the way. She's like, no, not that one. That's for when that face is like, yep. Well done. That's beautiful work. It's beautiful Honestly, work. Honestly, it was worth the wait. I'm trying to go back to the game. Dominique oh. pointed out correctly that we do spend so much time talking about LeBron. We probably should have been talking about Devin Booker in this particular yeah. game. Another Jordan important something. figure that I feel we should have addressed, NBA ref David Guthrie. Have you guys been Ooh. watching what he's been up to? Our friend Jason Concepcion Fierce. calls him foul bay. Can we, can we get the video, please? <laughs> There's a flagrant penalty one on Morris for launching his body into the defender and also making explosive contact <laughs> into the area. Flip those hips. Oh my space. gosh, Endo. Wow, man. It's it's true. the eye contact it's, and then holding the eye contact and like, then just moving, moving. I don't want to stand up shoulders. all the way because I'm wearing sweatpants. Nice you can now see, but this is what he, it's like. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> okay. and, and then give him the face. <laughs> Flagrant one. Yeah. Do any of you have the guts to pick the bucks over the villainous nets? Bucks and seven. Yes, I have all of the guts. I have so much guts because what I saw from the Bucks this year, when they beat the Nets two times in a row in that three game series over the course of the year, I saw a team that is not like the Bucks of yore. And yes, I know what the Nets have is the greatest assemblage of big three players that we've ever seen, right? They've scored the most points of any big three in the first round in NBA history. I get all of that. But what the Bucks have in Giannis, in Drew Holiday, in Chris Middleton, and P.J. Tucker is a bunch of big bodies they're going to throw at those dudes. And so Kevin Durant being guarded by Giannis, we've seen Giannis block one of his shots in ways we've never seen anybody do that before. We've seen those guys team up to combine in a way that the Bucs at the end of games have never had before. So I think this is a different Bucs team. I think this is a team that will take the Nets to seven and then beat them. Yes, give me all of the guts. You know what I didn't see in those two Bucks wins? James Harden, Pablo, because he didn't play in them. But yes, Kevin Durant was blocked once. Excellent sample size there. Um, with all due respect <laughs> to the mountain time zone, this to me does feel like the real NBA Finals. Like I truly believe these are probably the two best teams and it's gonna be an incredible series. And they're two teams that are wildly different like the nets now have this fully armed offensive battle station the big three scored the most points per game in the first series ever and the bucks meanwhile yeah. held miami to under 95 points a game this is two immovable forces meeting for a series and that is incredibly exciting and that's why i truly believe it's a pick -up. like I know you guys are accusing me of nets homerism but i think this game is incredible it's me, not your home <laughs> you can't be a homer of some place that is not your home. All you have is the ism. Yeah, it's just a lot of ism. But I, I do appreciate that you introduced an immovable force. What the hell is that? We got two it's, immovable forces going at it's each when, other. I don't, I don't okay, first of all. I lived in Brooklyn for 10 years, Dominique. So. I know you did. I know you oh, did. It, it is here also it not your home. At no point would you ever say Brooklyn is your home, but this series... But the jeans were so skinny, for the record. <laughs> this series is, in, in my view, in yours, Mina, this is the NBA Finals. I think the team that comes out of this will end up winning the championship. I think the Bucks have a real chance. I'm not necessarily confident enough to pick them, but I think the interesting thing, most interesting thing about this series is we don't really know what either of these teams actually are. And even through the first round series, they both kind of embarrassed teams that were very, very flawed and not good enough to beat them. So we saw the best of them. I think throughout the course of this entire season, we saw who the Bucks think they are, but it's different when you get in the playoffs. It's a very different team with Drew Holiday than they were from the team last year. And obviously the Nets 
haven't been tested for real yet in a real situation. Their defense looked a lot better with KD sometimes moonlighting as a rim protector. It looked a lot better in that first round series, but they also were playing a team that doesn't have much offensive firepower. So I would be lying if I said I had a handle on who's going to win this series, but I think you're right, Pablo. They have the bodies, uh, the Bucks, to give them trouble. But have we ever really seen anybody stop any of these players like these guys don't play well offensively when they're not shooting well. You know, what's fascinating is I truly believe both of these teams have big threes like Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday are playing at a superstar level now. And what might actually decide the series is the absence of two players who are very much not in the big three. Jeff Green, who was out mm. for the first series and is actually very important on defense for Brooklyn and Dante DiVincenzo, who's not going to play for the Bucks and would be really important in playing defense against the Nets' big three. White so, Dante. Wow. <laughs> Key to the series right there. So what happens oh. <laughs> if the Nets win? Do do all teams just they, – they win the championship and then we just stop playing defense and basketball altogether? Because if they win the series, it is just – against let's, the team let's, that plays good let's defense. Let's slow it down, guys. Let's slow it down. And yeah, I know Mina was making fun of me because we had this one incredible block of Kevin Durant by Giannis. But I believe the three of us in the last like two months or so have played more games than the Brooklyn Nets big three have in their lives on the court together. So let's <laughs> slow that roll just a tad. Dominique's question was what happens if the Nets yeah, win the championship? And the answer is I lead the parade. I'm the, <laughs> like the grand marshal. I lord up next on hq whatever uh, you were posting uncle cracker lyrics in I mean, college because yeah. you were that's down bad, bad. That, that's bad it was that's because bad. day after day i was so confused do you question if we should overreact to dame's instagram post so late last night damian lillard joined the tradition of pro athletes passive aggressively posting Instagram captions that make all of us wonder, wait a minute, is this actually part of our real jobs and should we talk about this? And I think the answer is yes, because he said this, quote, how long should I stay dedicated? How long till opportunity meet preparation? A Nipsey Hussle quote from one of his songs. And look, as someone who once put the Uncle Cracker version of Drift Away on my AOL Instant Messenger away message when my freshman year of college girlfriend dumped me, this is very real. <laughs> there is no way around this. God, he is in his feels, doing? and his feels need to be addressed. We could that talk about vulnerable. Jokic. We could talk about Damian Lillard. Somehow you want us to talk about – never mind. Damian Lillard, yes, we should take it Thank very you. seriously. We should absolutely react to this way because he's been so stridently against that. I think it's a real thing, a real frustration that's built up. It's possible that it's just a like, reaction to what just happened, but Damian Lillard doesn't strike me as that type of guy. He seems always to be kind of well thought out, and this is probably something that's been kind of hanging on him, and he notices that even when he has a bananas game where he shoots 12 or hits 12 threes in the playoffs, they still lose. It's hard to right. walk away from that game and not think, what the hell am I doing for who, <laughs> for what? So, yeah, I think this is real. Yeah, earlier we compared LeBron, I did, to a mama possum carrying all of his babies. Is there an animal that carries their babies at an even like greater level than a mama possum? Because that is Damian Lillard. After seeing this Instagram post, I then went to Google to read the entire lyrics of the Nipsey Hussle song, saying, wondering Research. maybe if they had been taken out of context or there was some additional context. And that brought me to my favorite mental image whenever this kind of thing happens, which is the Portland Trailblazers front office desperately <laughs> on raplyrics.com trying to figure out what this means for the future of the team. Isn't it rap genius? Who goes to raplyrics.com? Is that an actual site? When you Google raplyrics.com is the oh. first one that comes up. Oh, okay, okay, just to be clear, Vita Gimes just Googled rap lyrics. <laughs> no, I Googled the lyrics to dedication. Whatever, uh, you were posting Uncle Cracker lyrics in college because I mean, yeah. you were that's down bad. bad. That, that's bad. It was that's because day after day, I was so confused. And I looked for a light in the pouring grave. Oh, my gosh. You remember them. Do you question if Lynn Bowden Jr. fixed his tattoo? So Lynn Bowden Jr. plays for the Miami Dolphins, a fact you may have noticed because he tattooed it onto his body. And let's show stage one. This was how it looked initially. <laughs> Like the dolphin not looking terribly healthy, 
the logo <laughs> not looking very realistic. Also, those kind of sun rays, which didn't really seem to involve a lot of work. But he has put more work into this. Let's see what it looks like now. Oh, God. Oh, my God. So much. <laughs> No, I mean, what? no weapon formed against me shall prosper. He put some ha wait, those are ha ha's. Or <laughs> yo, like I don't know why this has very Joker vibes, but it seems it seems terrifying now. Honestly, if he was a friend of mine, I'd be very concerned. Like I'm nervous to make fun of this. Who <laughs> tattoos themselves not once? but twice and, and they didn't realize the first time i'm not very good at this maybe i shouldn't just practicing tattoos on your leg making i guess that was a tadpole uh, is that a tadpole it's not a dolphin well, okay. and, then, tadpole and, then, and then to cap it all off then he changed his number he's number six now so who is number no. six? oh is that is that a, is that a number it is, is well, number? 15. It's oh no 15. I, was looking, I was looking at to the left is that a 1k am i do i need an yeah. urban dictionary this i don't get that either Oh God! The doll. It is a dolphin, and the right. mascot of the Miami Dolphins. I, I don't know why I know this, but its name is TD, like touchdown, which stands for why? the dolphin. The oh. dolphin. <laughs> well, this is but this is a thing. Like, why is it that all like Lucky the Leprechaun's name is Lucky? We learned that this past week when the whole Kyrie thing stomping on it. Why? Why are we naming these things? They don't need the mascots? names. I, I can probably name the Dolphin Blitz with the Seahawks. Do you guys want to guess some NFL mascots? <laughs> oh, this is, wow. Oh, Poe, wow. yeah, that's Poe. This is right. the, oh, wait, 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 wait. The Ravens po. poetically it's named po. their mascot after Edgar Allan Poe. Wait, po. so yes. Dominique, this, okay, this is fascinating. So Dominique was on the Raven. I'm guessing he's right. And it is interesting to me, like, I always wonder if players know this, like, the names of their mascots, so how did that come Wait. to your attention when you um, were playing? I, it says P-O-E on the back of his jersey, and I know that, like, the Ravens, the name of the Ravens is uh, Edgar Allan Poe de derivative, like, that's why they chose Wait, the name Wait, the actual, that. really? I didn't know that. Oh, I know this. Oh. I know this one, weirdly. All right. Uh, Jack. I, 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 his name is Jackie. Jack. No, it's Jackson Beville or something oh. like that. Because this mascot Why? is always getting up to shenanigans. This mascot. Hold on. Has Isn't that what mas are, aren't all mascots up to shenanigans? <laughs> Isn't that the point of being a mascot? Pardon me. Jackson it's Jackson Deville. There's a whole section on the Wikipedia of all of Jackson Deville's various controversies. Jackson, I'm gonna read this, is known for his crazy antics. After the October 2007 game against the Colts, their president, Bill Polian, complained to the NFL and Jackson was reprimanded again. During the November 2007 home game, he spent a good portion of it in a makeshift cage. In 2009, he ended up getting stuck during a zipline stunt and hung above the field by his feet for three minutes while the crew tried to free him. That looks like Dan Levitard. Is that hat backwards? <laughs> his name is Captain Fear. Again, Why name him if you're not going to put any effort into it? Like, that's terrible. Right, like, Capt Captain Fear looks like he's responding to the fact that he just learned that his name is Captain <laughs> Fear. <laughs> he just heard me comparing him to Dan Levitard. <laughs> Streaming until noon tomorrow on YouTube, Freedom. Okay, I thought we were going to preview Clippers Mavericks because Luka Doncic is like the biggest star in the NBA playoffs right now, and he's about to eliminate Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. That's an enormous story, but sure, let's talk about whatever the hell Dan's up to. Oh, wow. Oh, oh my oh, God. What? No. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Are those bike shorts? Oh, God. Is a basket on his bike? Do you want to see more of Dan Lebatar? Do you want to what? see the hottest videos in the internet? Do you want to see Dan in Wayne's oh, oh, no! Or no! Oh, Lord! Well, for the no. next 24 hours, Dan is live on YouTube. He's going to be hot like me, Papi. Oh! The next 24 hours is going to be tough. 
<laughs> last time I was up all night, this one we made Dan. Check out Freedom oh. on Levatar and Friends YouTube channel. What's hap what? <laughs> Is it over? <laughs> no, it's never over. I'm never gonna forget that. So it's Leopard right. and Friends YouTube channel, just so I know where not to go in the next. Yeah, just so I know what to report <laughs> yes. to YouTube's official <laughs> content moderators. Yes. I'm gonna say no. I'm also gonna say that pool table seems to be the strongest pool table in the world, <laughs> Dominique. Are you intrigued? I am intrigued, but that doesn't mean I'm going to watch. So again, I Levitard and Friends uh, YouTube channel, whatever. Can I get that blocked from my IP address? <laughs> I can never, ever go there in life. I would like that removed from any potential future history of my internet searches. Mina Kimes, are you going to go on incognito mode or how are you consuming <laughs> this? Are you intrigued? This is so unfair because you guys are on the East Coast. You've already eaten lunch, and I had to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was highly questionable. It is Friday afternoon. Congratulations to everybody for making it, assuming you haven't vomited the contents of your stomach by now. That's Dominique Foxworth. That is Mina Kimes. They're on all sorts of platforms on ESPN. Go find them. They're worth it sometimes. And that's